Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg, and as always, I'm super stoked that you're here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about several things, but namely, I want to talk about my journey to getting to where I'm at now in cybersecurity, how I got there, and some ways that I think will be helpful for you to discern if cybersecurity is the right career for you and what kind of certifications you should be looking at to achieve your cybersecurity career goals. So if you're not familiar with me, my background into cybersecurity was not traditional. So many people who have gotten into cybersecurity talk about, oh, you need to start out on the help desk, then you need to become a sysadmin, then you need to go into networking, then you can get into cybersecurity. And it's only after you've completed those several first initial kind of careers that you can get into cybersecurity. And whereas I understand the arguments for it, I definitely think that having that solid foundation of working in the various tech fields is going to help when you get into cybersecurity, which is inherently a culmination of a lot of those skill sets from networking and sysadmin and whatnot. I don't think it's necessary to go through that exact same path just because other people did. There are so many other ways that can help you get into cybersecurity that don't require walking five miles through the snow backwards up a hill, if you get what I'm saying. So my journey into cybersecurity was a bit unconventional, and honestly, a reason that I'm going to tie this into a lot of the tools offered by ISC2 later is because they really support people who have unconventional, unconventional pathways of getting into cybersecurity like mine. So just to give you a bit of background, I did not have any experience working in tech when I got into cybersecurity. I guess you could say I kind of dipped my toes into the tech world because I was working as a consultant, helping clients at this large Fortune 100 company discern if they should move their on-premises stuff to the cloud. That's like the layman term of it. I was kind of a salesperson, kind of a tech person. I was like helping build out Azure or cloud payloads for people to discern if it would be financially beneficial for their organization. So whereas I wasn't directly working in tech, you know, spinning things up or getting any hands-on experience with it, I was you know, learning about it, getting the basic certifications in cloud. I was helping customers discern like what's the best platform for you, how much storage do you need, what protection do you need, and approaching it from kind of a sales consulting standpoint. Simultaneous to that, I was going to school to get my master's degree in cybersecurity, which a lot of people ask, was the master's degree in cybersecurity worth it? I have an entire video on that, so you can check that out. But the point of the story is my undergrad degree is in political science. It's not even in anything tech related. I always tell people when they ask, how did you get into cybersecurity without any tech background? It's because I was able and still am, I like to think, to speak very efficiently and effectively about myself. If you put me in a room with someone, regardless of who they are, if it's a janitor or the CISO working at a company, I'm able to hold a conversation with them. And in this certain case, when I was applying for my first role in cybersecurity, it was at the same Fortune 100 that I was doing the kind of cloud sales consulting for. I had an interview with the CISO to get that junior SOC position. And I was able to tell him, you know, look, I don't have any experience in cybersecurity, but I'll work harder than anyone else in this room. I will stay the extra hours. I will be innovative. I'm creative. I'm a great communicator. I'm a great team player. These are all the soft skills that I have. And my education and everything centric around that proves to you that I'm a quick learner. So when you pair those two things together, the fact that I have really awesome soft skills and I'm also a quick learner, but I also have a great attitude and a passion for this, Honestly, I think that makes kind of an unbeatable argument when you're applying for the job. So thankfully, I got my first job. I was a junior SOC analyst, basically. And honestly, I wanted to promote pretty quickly. I just got my hands into everything. So I quickly discerned, I want to get certifications. I started out by getting the CompTIA Security Plus certification. It was quite quick. I was obviously very nervous about trying to get it because it was my first certification, so I didn't really know what to expect. But once I did get that, my confidence was bolstered. I was several years into working in cybersecurity at this point, and I had relevant education towards it. I'd earned my master's degree in cybersecurity, which made me um, like applicable to be able to apply for the CISSP once I passed the exam. So... Honestly, everyone always asks me, you know, what certification can you get that's really going to open doors for you? It was the CISSP for me. The CISSP 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a managerial certification, but it's also a pinnacle certification. If you are wanting to bypass the HR firewalls, a vast majority of jobs that I look at nowadays that are related to cybersecurity, they ask for a CISSP. So having that under your belt just automatically gets you to bypass those HR firewalls. It's a great conversation starter. Even though it's not a technical exam, it is one that requires a lot of deep thought. It's a very thought-provoking exam. So when you go into an interview with someone who already has their CISSP and you're being interviewed by someone who has a CISSP, it's a great kind of connection and rapport that you can build off the bat because you've both gone through something that was a difficult process to pass the exam. Uh, but for me personally, passing the CISP just gave me that confidence that I needed in my career to be confident in myself. Like I was, and still am, a very young woman working in a male-dominated field. And especially when I first began my career and kind of into the intermediary portion of it, I lacked confidence. People who used to work with me at that point in time, they would definitely say that about me as well. I was scared to speak up. I had all these ideas, but I didn't know what to do with them. I thought, oh, you know, I'm the newest, I'm the youngest, what have you. Perhaps my value isn't, it's not going to be present here if I speak up. But getting the CISSP just validated me that when I set my mind to do something, I'm capable of achieving it. And so once I got the CISSP, that's when I began Cybersecurity Meg. That's when I felt like I was qualified to start applying for more senior or advanced level positions within the industry. I got the job that I have now working as an incident response consultant on IBM's X-Force team. The CISSP just opened so many doors for me. And perhaps you're not at the point in your career where you're able to acquire the CISSP. Perhaps you can take the exam and become an associate of ISC squared, which means you don't have the appropriate number of years to get the CISSP yet, but you've still passed the exam. And once you hit that five-year mark, you're able to get the CISSP certification. Uh, but there's so many other exams that are offered or certifications and resources, some free, some paid by ISC2, that are going to be just really amazing for you to check out. And I wanted to go over some of them. So this Breaking into Cybersecurity ebook is a really great resource. It's completely free. You're just putting in your information. And basically, it's going to tell you about how to get into cybersecurity. Like, what are the best resources? How to discern if cybersecurity is a great career for you, how you can get your first job in cybersecurity, what the path looks like, anything from top to bottom. This ebook has been crafted by experts. It's going to help you get into the cybersecurity field. Now, second to that, I really like this ebook about how to, once you get in the cybersecurity field, what kind of role should you be looking at? There's so many times that people get into cybersecurity or they're trying to get into cybersecurity and they're like, but I don't know what version, like what subfield of cybersecurity that I should aim for. And historically, people who are trying to get into cybersecurity think it's either penetration testing or blue teaming. And I know blue teaming is very all encompassing. There are so many subfields of blue teaming, but I think people think of blue teaming as just being a sock monkey. And the reality is, is that there's so many different subfields of cybersecurity that people just aren't aware about. So they don't even know that they should be looking for jobs in these subfields like GRC, which stands for governance, risk, and compliance, or getting into software security, like application security, or just entry-level cybersecurity in and of itself, being a junior SOC analyst, a junior penetration tester, what have you. Um, I know everyone's probably laughing like, oh, a junior level role, does that even exist in cybersecurity nowadays? But there are definitely several still out there. The point being, this ebook, it's completely free. It gives you the rundown on what these subfields of cybersecurity, which are very like in high demand jobs, are going to offer you. There are a lot of people who like me, they didn't come from a traditional technical background. They don't have that degree in uh, computer science or what have you. And perhaps you started in art or you started in political science or you're working in finance right now and you're curious about cybersecurity. This ebook is going to give you the rundown on what careers might be a good fit for you if you're not interested in the traditional, oh, let me become a pen tester or SOC analyst kind of roles. The other things that are really exciting is that ISC Squared has these build your skills and earn your CPE credits. These are going to be really helpful for specific career paths that you might be interested in. So if you're looking to get into an entry level cybersecurity role, they have these like skill building programs, which can either be free for people who are ISC Squared members or 
$19 and up for people who are not I ISCT members. And basically, you just come down and pick what kind of path you're interested in. If you're trying to become a leader in a managerial position, if you're curious about cloud security, then you can go here and take these. So they have really great skill building going on right now, which I would definitely check out as well. And the last thing that I'd like to talk about is their new online instructor-led or self-paced training. So they're doing these new training opportunities, which have been revisions, and I've taken some of them. They're really great. One of my favorite things is if you don't pass the exam, you get access to the same training again without having to repay for it, so long as you're accessing it within one year of the initial training. I know a lot of trainings that if you take the exam, you only get the training for a certain amount of time, and regardless of if you pass the exam or not, that training just goes away after you take the exam, so I think that's a really beneficial part of their training. I know right now they're using, um, they're like launching this AI or artificial intelligence led training, which is really nifty. I haven't heard of any other organization that's doing it. But basically, when you're going through the training, it takes into account your background, how much experience you have in the field about the topic that's relevant to the certification. And it doesn't just start you from the beginning if you have that like solid foundation that's related to the certification. The artificial intelligence is picking up on your skill sets, things that you're like well knowledgeable about, and it's not just dumb you from the beginning. Um, so that's something that's really nifty right now. But yeah, the CISSP isn't the only certification that ISC2 offers. Of course, there's the CCSP for cloud. They have the certified in cybersecurity for, where they're trying to get 1 million people certified in cybersecurity. That's more geared towards entry-level folks. If you're trying to get into the field and you're looking for a certification to dip your toes into the water, that's a really great option. But overall, I hope you found this video useful. I really just can express, and that's why I keep talking about it, how much appreciation I have for myself that I decided to get the CISSP at the point in my career that I did. I really felt that it was a huge launching point for me and that I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I not gotten it. That's it for today. I hope you guys had a great video and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next video. Ciao.